This video cast will demonstrate how to use Blue Coat's Security Analytics app for Splunk. This application is available from Blue Coat's website, and you can find a link from Splunk Base as well. In this situation, the app has already been downloaded, and we are going to walk through installation, setup, and usage. We begin by installing the downloaded app through the Splunk interface option of installing an app by file. Once uploaded, Splunk will need to be restarted. After logging in after restart, you will be prompted to configure the app. On the configuration screen, you will need to set the hostname or IP address for where your security analytics platform is located, change the port if it's not running on the default HTTPS port, change the time zone to reflect the offset from GMT where you're located, and enter a security analytics username and associated API key for that user. The API key can be found by logging into security analytics as the desired user and then clicking on the user's name in the top right hand corner. From the drop-down, select Account Settings and copy the API key shown and paste that into the Splunk setup. The optional settings allow you to filter the data being imported into Splunk or to rate limit the number of events ingested per minute. Additional configuration is required if you're using a central manager and those steps are detailed in the installation guide. There is one more configuration step if we want to add Security Analytics Pivot Search to Splunk. Navigate to Settings Fields, select Workflow Actions, Make sure the app context is set to Blue Coat Security Analytics app for Splunk, and then click on Security Analytics event. In the link configuration for URI, we are going to change the IP address from loopback to that of our Security Analytics platform. Once done, click on Save. When we select the Blue Coat Security Analytics app, we are taken to the default overview dashboard. On the top menu, the app has four areas to access. The first provides configuration and feedback. The dashboard views give general overviews. Threat views give detailed information from Security Analytics Threat Intelligence and Threat Blades, and the Search tab allows us to pivot to Security Analytics with data pre-populated. For the purposes of this demo, I have been sending a variety of PCAPs into my lab, many of which contain malicious activity that is reflected in the high volume of alerts seen here. In addition to the alerting information on the overview dashboard, we also get a quick view into top source and destination hosts by traffic usage, as well as the volume of source and destination traffic as seen per country. Notice when I select the highest volume line by traffic responder in the graph that it shows NA. NA represents internal IP addresses to our network, so the amount of volume is what we expect. There are two additional dashboards in the Splunk app that visualize the type of traffic going across the network. The first is Network Overview, which shows some of the top users by parameters such as IP address, ports, and protocols. The next is Web Overview which breaks down HTTP traffic for viewing into top hosts, most seen URLs, and top user agents seen on the network. In most of the dashboards, there are options to filter out the data from specific fields or threat levels. In this case, I am doing a quick filter to see all the activity for systems using the Mozilla web browser. The Threat View dashboards require threat blades on security analytics to fully display all the widgets in the dashboard. There are several dashboards and threat views, the default threat view page that we see here gives us an overview of what type of alerts are being seen on the network, as well as some of the top offenders and threats. Each threat blade has its own unique dashboard as well, showing only the alerts relating to that particular blade. Here we take a look at the dashboard for the web threat blade. We can see most of the alerts are stemming from malicious URLs, but we do have some files that have been accessed over the network that are malicious as well. We have seen some advanced malware that was also getting detected using both the security analytics and the malware analysis appliance. There are filtering options in these dashboards as well. In this case here, I want to see only the most critical of threats, so I set my threat score minimum to 10 and view the results. From the metadata from security analytics and using the querying language of Splunk, we can also create additional dashboards to show information such as anomalous activity on the network, or we can see the IP addresses of threats plotted around the world map. The last feature of the app being shown is the ability to pivot off searches from other networking devices. This feature works for events that log IP information in the format of Splunk's common information model. In this case, we are going to take events from Sourcefire's Defense Center. As you can see, there are a large number of intrusion detection events, many of which contain the alert message for an exploit redirection kit. Using the Event Action dropdown, 
I can pivot into Security Analytics by clicking on Investigate IPs in Security Analytics. The window launch into Security Analytics has the IP addresses preset and the clock is sent around when the event occurred. Investigating what other actions the host on my network did, I removed the destination IP address from the filter and click Update. Now the summary dashboard shows all the metadata from my internal host and I immediately notice a large number of accesses to count13.php as well as a number of strange domain names. Clicking the server widget launches server reports for more details and I see even more of these domains that appear to be fast flux domains commonly used by cyber criminals. I start a more detailed investigation by clicking on extractions. Now I am presented with a timeline of events that I can use to recreate the content or get more detailed information in threat intelligence. I can see all the fast flux domains are accessing count13.php, so it appears to be a bot trying to find a command and control channel still up. These accesses coincide with the information we already had in Splunk from Sourcefire's Defense Center. My initial goal in using security analytics is to find out what triggered these events. I notice the internal user has made a search on Google. Recreating this page, I can see he was searching for Seton U shelters. I can also see immediately after the search, our user goes to the Seton U shelter website. What is interesting though, is when I recreate the Seton U shelter website, it appears that there is nothing on the page and it is blank. Looking at the actual source of the page reveals something different. We see JavaScript and what really stands out is the abnormally long variables. It appears this may have been a buffer overflow attempt at the browser and has triggered the bot installation. There is much more that can be shown both during and after the event from Security Analytics, but this video is only a quick demonstration. If you want to see more about this investigation or learn more about Security Analytics and its associated Splunk app, please contact Blue Code Systems.